Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how you can use Amazon's free repricer. So Amazon actually has a free repricer for professional users. So if you're paying for the monthly membership with Amazon to be able to sell on their platform, it's about 30 bucks per month for Canadians. It will come with this free repricer option. I actually personally use a repricer called Be Cool. It's about 25 bucks per month. I find it's just better, like the process is smoother, it's easier to use, um, it has more options Options of rules that you can set up so it's just a better overall repricer um, however if you're just starting out and you want to use something for free you don't want to spend your money on a software definitely try out Amazon's repricer I used it for about a month before I got be cool and honestly like it's not amazing but it gets the job done so today I'm going to show you guys how you can set up that repricer how to set up the rules and all of that so I'm going to switch over to my computer and I'll show you guys everything all right guys so I'm going to show you how you can set up your repricer on your Amazon account so the first thing that I want you to do is go to your manage inventory um, page. So you're going to go to the menu right here. You're going to go to um, inventory. You're going to go to manage inventory and that's where you're going to end up. So once you're on this page, the first thing that I want you to do is go to preferences. Um, you're going to select these two columns to add them to your inventory page. So it's your minimum price and your maximum price. Then you're going to scroll down and you're going to save changes so now you're going to have those two columns appearing right here so the next thing that i want you to do is obviously add all of your products to your inventory so all of the products that you're selling should already be added to your inventory i'm actually just using really random products to show you guys an example so if you see inactive potential high pricing error um, that just means that the price that you put for this product is too high and the reason why it's saying this for this product is because as you can see it says featured offer four dollars and 97 cents so the product that i'm using as an example it's it's a product that literally sells for like five dollars um, i'm just using it solely for the purpose of showing you guys how to reprice so i put the price at thirty dollars to make it a good example the average price of a lot of the products that i sell typically tend to be around thirty dollars so that's why i'm using thirty dollars as a good average price because typically the products that you have that are selling for like five dollars there's not enough space for you to actually make profit so most of your products should be like selling for around twenty dollars and up otherwise again you're not really gonna make any profit so for the purpose of this example let's pretend that this product is priced at thirty dollars and I'm able to sell it at thirty dollars so what you're gonna do now is you can actually see the estimate of the fee right next to the price so they're telling me that the estimate of the fee is eleven dollars and seventy seven cents it includes the FBA fee of 727 so if I click on this little arrow it's actually going to show me um, how much I'm paying for each fee because we actually pay two different fees um, if you weren't aware we pay a referral fee and we also pay an FBA fee so you can see all of the details here so if I'm selling this product for $30 and the referral fee is $450 the FBA fee is $727 basically I'm going to be left with $18.23 so just to show you guys that it works you can do $30 yourself minus $450 minus $7 27 and that's going to leave you with $18.23 so this is essentially your revenue um, however to get actual real profit net profit you need to deduct how much it's going to cost you to purchase this product so let's just say for the purpose of this example to make it simple let's pretend that the cost of this product is $8.23 so I'm going to minus the cost so I'm going to do minus $8.23 that's going to leave me with $10 net profit. So essentially why I'm showing you this is so that you can figure out what your minimum price is. So for every single product, before setting up the repricer and setting up the rules for the repricer, you're going to fill in your minimum price and maximum price for every single product. So assuming that this product sells for $30, we're able to make $10 net profit. What our goal is right now is to figure out what's the lowest price that I can price this product at and break even pretty much. So you're basically going to make back the fee from Amazon and the cost of the product. So what you can actually do to get your break even price is add up the cost of the product plus the Amazon fees. So in this case, we're going to do $4.50 for the referral fee, we're gonna do $7.27 for the FBA fee, and now we're gonna add the cost, which was $8.23, that was the pretend cost that I made up. So essentially our break-even price is $20. So now we know that the lowest we can price this product is $20 because if you were to sell it for $20, you would at least make back the cost of the product 
and the Amazon fees and so technically you would just break even and nothing would happen and so our goal obviously is to make profit and because I personally pay for a prep center I pay one dollar per unit also we pay typically between 50 cents to like 80 cents per unit for shipping our items with UPS so what I like to do is add two dollars to this number so if twenty dollars is our break-even price I would add two dollars so this would make our minimum price twenty two dollars so what you can do is fill in that number twenty two dollars and then you need to add your maximum price so for the maximum price what you can do is usually add maybe like 10 or 20 bucks extra so you could do like 42 dollars or you can go check keepa so if you're using keepa to analyze your products which by the way you definitely should um go check keepa go see what's the highest price that you can find on the keepa graph for this listing that it was selling at and not just the price that you see but check if it was actually selling at that price and so for example if i can see that oh this product used to sell like a couple months ago for 45 dollars i'm gonna put the price at around 45 dollars or maybe even a little bit higher maybe like 50 bucks so that just in case the price ever goes back up to that price i can take advantage of that so once you've figured out your minimum price and maximum price for every single product you're going to press save. What I would recommend is once you actually add a product to your inventory, go fill it out right away. So go fill out your minimum price, your maximum price, get it over with beforehand so that once your items actually become active with Amazon, the repricer is already set up and you can already start taking advantage of that and getting more sales. So once you've filled in everything, you're going to press save all or save and it will keep that as your min price and your max price. And so the next thing that you're actually going to do is gonna, you're going to go to a different tab. It's going to be the pricing tab. You're going to go to automate pricing. So this is what Amazon's repricer looks like. So basically the repricer will just make sure that your product's price does not go below your minimum or above your maximum price and it will constantly try to make sure that you're at a competitive price. So I'm going to show you guys how you can create a general rule for FBA sellers. So also, by the way, I'm an FBA seller. This rule that I'm going to show you is very catered to FBA sellers. So what you're going to do is create a customized pricing rule. So that's the first thing you're going to do. Which type of rule do you want to create? You're going to do competitive buy box because as FBA sellers, we're always typically competing for the buy box. And the reason why we wouldn't put lowest price is because sometimes the lowest price is actually held by FBM sellers. And technically, FBM sellers are not our competition because we can often have our price a little bit higher than FBM and still win the buy box over them or still make more sales than them. So for the rule, you're going to put competitive buy box. And how do you want to name this rule? You can just put like buy box something like that then you're going to do proceed to marketplace selection so depending on what marketplace you're selling in i'm personally selling in only canada so i'm going to do save and continue to select rule attributes so define below the pricing attributes you want to set in amazon.ca so here it says which pricing action do you want amazon to take stay below the featured offer price by a specific amount match the featured offer price stay above the feature of featured offer price so you're gonna see a lot of people and there's actually there's actually a lot of videos on youtube of people telling you to do stay below the featured price by one cent and so this is how listings get tanked so please do not do this <laughs> a lot of times especially new sellers they'll watch videos on youtube and they'll see oh my god i can just put it i can just put the price lower by one cent and i can win all of the sales however if everybody has their repricer set like this it's going to go down by one cent then everybody else's will go down by one cent and it will constantly just keep going down and down and down and down and that's actually how listings get tanked and so just think about it you're not ruining this listing only for other people but you're also uh, ruining it for yourself so please do not do that what i would say is like unless you have a product that you really 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 need to liquidate for some reason like for some reason you need to get rid of it then okay maybe maybe you can do the minus one cent thing but in general please try to stay away from that and typically what you're going to do is just match the featured price and so typically if everybody offers the same value so if you're two fba sellers and you're you have the same price 
typically the sales will actually rotate between those two sellers obviously whoever has more reviews will typically get more sales so in the beginning it is a little bit hard to compete with sellers that have much higher reviews or higher ratings but basically just be patient get as many sales as you can in the beginning so that you can rack up a bunch of reviews and you're gonna see that once you start getting reviews it becomes a lot easier and just basically match the lowest FBA price. That's in general what you want to do. So next thing is which type of offers do you want to compare to on Amazon? So all offers on Amazon for the same ASIN and condition, specific type of offers. You can do like only offers with the same fulfillment method, um, only offers from third party sellers. So only offers uh, with the same fulfillment method is actually, it means that we're competing with FBA sellers. Whereas if you do all offers on Amazon for the same ASIN and condition, you're also including FBMs. Like I said, typically we can very easily win sales over FBMs, even if we're raising the price. So I would, I would recommend to do specific type of offers, only offers with the same fulfillment method. So we're, we want to compete with other FBAs, not FBMs. Do you also want to compare with prices that are off of Amazon? So uh, absolutely not, <laughs> because then they're going to go compare with Walmart pricing or Sephora pricing or wherever you're buying your stuff from. The whole point of this is, is so that like, for example, if Walmart has their price at, on sale at $5, Amazon's basically asking you like, oh, do you want us to check to see if you can put your product a bit on sale based on the other offers at other marketplaces? But obviously we do not want to do that. So put no. Do you want to continue repricing if you update your price elsewhere in Seller Central? So if ever you want to update the price and you want to change it around, you want to put it a bit lower, a bit higher, whatever you want, um, they're basically asking if you change it yourself manually. So if we go back to the first page that we were on and you adjust the price manually, um, basically they're asking, do you want them to continue repricing or do you want them to pause the repricing? And so when I was using it, I would typically put, yes, I want to continue repricing. Um, and you're just like manually adjusting the price, but it's still going to make sure that you're staying within those two numbers. So I would definitely say to put, yes, I want to continue repricing, but obviously that one is optional. So the next thing that you're going to do is save this rule in amazon.ca and now it's going to say proceed to SKU selection. So now we've created our rule. This is the repricing rule that we set up. It's going to be in amazon.ca. Now we need to choose which products we're actually going to add to this. So you're going to press proceed to SKU selection. And so this is how it's going to look. This is the page that it's going to redirect you to. Because I stopped using this repricer and I use Be Cool, I haven't filled in the minimum price or maximum price for pretty much any of my products. Um, but yours, as long as you have filled in the min and max price for all of them, they should be listed here already. And then you're just going to go to action. You're going to do assign to rule, and then you're going to select which one. So the one that we just made was the buy box rule. So you're going to select buy box and then it's going to say set minimum and maximum price limits so you can do it for different countries or one country i only sell in canada so i'm just going to do one country and then i'm going to press start repricing and so now essentially that product has been assigned to the buy box rule so amazon will start repricing that product for me so basically like i said you're going to start by putting your minimum maximum price for every single product after you've added them to your inventory then you're going to create the rule and then you're going to assign each product to that rule so that's essentially how you're going to set up the repricing with amazon's free repricer so take advantage of it it does the job it's not the best repricer in the market obviously there are better repricers for example with be cool i don't have to fill in the minimum price or my, like i don't have to calculate the minimum price myself be cool will kind of do it for me it gives me the estimate of the fee and i just have to say that oh i want to make at least two dollars for each product and it kind of fills in that price for me so it makes the process a lot smoother easier and they allow you to have a lot more different rules than the amazon one does so i would definitely definitely recommend be cool they have a free trial if you guys want to try it out i can uh, leave my link in the description you have a one month free trial if you want to test it out but in the meantime if you don't want to pay for anything just use amazon's free repricer because it's better than nothing and it will help you just get some extra sales and potentially get some extra profit all right guys so that is it for today's video if you found this video helpful please leave me a thumbs up and if you want to see more amazon content coming soon please subscribe to my channel and i will see you guys in the next video thanks again for watching have a great day guys